Well, kind of some sad news to start off today's video. I am announcing that I am selling our family-owned number 18T Outlaw cart. And two-time consecutive winner of the Winter Showdown. Make some noise for the kid out of Jacksonville, Tanner Holmes. So yes, it is a bummer to see this race car go. And I think one thing to mention, maybe other drivers can relate, but as a race car driver, I get attached to the vehicles I get to drive. My race cars are my race cars. And for me, I feel like I get attached because it's the moments that each car creates as it cycles through your program. And I know like this thing, when I first got it, you know, it was super new and we've put a lot of nights on it. And now it is time to make an upgrade. And this right here is my upgrade. So after talking about it a bunch recently, I finally decided to pull the trigger and purchase a new outlaw cart for our family program. This race car came specifically out of the factory QRC house program that I run weekly at the Red Bluff Outlaws. So it's literally an exact copy of the orange car, 2021 Spitfire. It's got a wing that I still need to put together. We're gonna need to drop my seat in it and then bolt an engine on the side. So I am beyond excited to add this thing to our program. Program. I think the goal for today is really just to get started. There's obviously some work that needs to be done to get it closer and closer to being race ready. So we're gonna have you guys hang out with us here in the shop today. And then also the car that I showed you at the beginning of this video that we are getting rid of, we have to finish it up and get it ready to sell. Well, I got the seat about ready to come out of this thing. If you have ever wondered how a seat is mounted in an outlaw cart, it's actually fairly simple. It is clamped in two spots on the frame. The other one is directly to the left here of the chain. And then also underneath the seat slides on the seat bar. And then there's like a little 7 16 uh, nut and bolt that you tighten up. And then that allows it to not slide forward and back. So you can see myself lifting the seat out of the 18T. That along with the engine and the fuel tank we are keeping. So we just got the fuel tank out of the race car. One thing that I did want to point out is the fuel tank that we run on the 450 is different than what we would run on a CR500. So this is the one that just came out of the car and you can see it has a fuel pump in it. In the tank here on the car I just bought, you have to run an external fuel pump because it does not have one built in. Just kind of an interesting fact about outlaw carts and hopefully that adds a little bit of clarity why I'm pulling the fuel tank off this car. So like I said, now the challenge for us is just to get everything off this car that we've been running and try to get it fitted for the new car. Since they are two different lower frames, things just line up a little bit differently. So we just wanted to spend as much time in that area as possible to make sure that we are perfect. Now I'm working on pulling the fuel tank out of this new car. Cause like I said, this is for a CR500 and we need to put the fuel tank in for our 450. So I do need to drill one small minor hole in the floor pan because this tank, as I mentioned, is different than that other one. On that previous one, it came out to here where this one mounts kind of closer to the center. So I'm gonna drill one quick hole. That should be good. So now that we got that drilled, we can finish tightening the fuel tank down. Now in the meantime, my dad adjusted the steering column to make it a little bit more comfortable in the cockpit and he also decided to open a beer. I probably looked a little confused in that clip because I didn't even realize the camera was rolling, but that was a good call by him. And now we are both working on the new car. I pulled both rear tires off. Here is a shot of the rear axle and the hangers specifically. And this is kind of how you can adjust your ride heights in an outlaw cart in the rear. So we were getting everything set to where we would normally start the night for the Roseburg Indoor. And it's important that we did all of this now. So once we get the engine off the other car, all we have to do is set it on there, get it hooked up, tighten, get the chain on, instead of having to worry about still trying to adjust certain things. When the engine's off, you have so much more room. You can see even after all these years, my dad won't give me the heavier part of the job of lifting the engine. He still has me hold the radiator and the dash. 
How much heavier is this than a, the 500? Like six pounds, eight pounds? Probably 10. 10? Close to a 10 pounds heavier, which adds a ton of right side weight. Now that we got that thing though on the side of the car, it's time to start uh, bolting this thing all on. So the next piece of the puzzle for us is getting everything fitted. For example, in this next shot, my dad has the big old crescent wrench out. He's trying to bend the tab on the right side so then the radiator sits in the right spot and at the proper angle. And that's actually not the car's fault. Our radiator we have for this engine is just not in good shape, so we had to do a quick adjustment there. And now it's about hooking up all the little things. Uh, for example, we got the clutch handle in the right spot, and then here in a second, we're gonna go to work on getting the chain lined up. While we're doing all this, my dad, or the engine I should say, is just sitting on the right side with the clamps and the Allens lightly screwed in so then it won't fall off. And now why it is sitting there, you can see my dad is trying to get the chain through but what we ended up recognizing is that our chain was not long enough. We were gonna have to get a different one because we tried to slide the engine as far back as we could, but with the Spitfire eventually, or just any frame, you run out of room. So that meant instead of moving the engine farther back, which actually could affect the handling, we just needed to get a longer, uh, a longer chain so then it could sit in the normal spot. We got the seat in. So we ended up having a longer chain, but it was still about trying to get the mounts lined up and get the engine to sit in the proper spot. Like I said, that does affect the handling a ton. So it's important to try to be as perfect as you can with it. Then I decided to uh, tighten both mounts and that nut and bolt that we have in the front. So then the seat would be all ready to rip and that part would be completed. Well, we're just wrapping up here in the shop and a ton of progress was made. And as usual, shout out to my dad. He was in the shop with me working his tail off, uh, trying to get this thing race ready to hit the track this weekend in Roseburg, Oregon for their annual turkey shootout. Two nights, Friday and Saturday, two complete shows, $500 to win the first night and $1,000 to win the second night. And I would say we did pretty dang good. Still got to put the wing together, but we got the seat in, we got the engine on, tank, clutch, electronics, radiator, now there's still more work that needs to be done, but that is why we decided to start this early in the week. On a Monday, we still have Tuesday and Wednesday to kind of try and wrap everything up before Thanksgiving. And then also gotta wrap up this car here. Now that I got the seat and the engine off, I'm gonna try to clean it one more time. You know, just some of the areas you can't get when all that's on the car. And once I finish this thing up and get the body back on and wheels and tires and take off this wing because we are not selling this wing. This wing has been around since 2014. Gotta keep it here in the shop. Uh, this thing will be off on its way. But otherwise, that is gonna conclude a night of working here in the shop. Thank you guys for hanging out with us and we'll be back tomorrow to finish up.